With today being Jackie Robinson Day, USA Today Sports posted some interesting stats showing the lack of African-American representation in Major League Baseball. The stats show that only 8% of MLB players are African-American and only 3.1% are pitchers, just 14 pitchers, and only seven starters are African-American. This is unbelievable. One of those pitchers is the Rays Chris Archer, who had this to say on this subject. People don't really view athleticism transcending onto the pitcher's mound as you would an outfielder or a shortstop. You just don't think of it as an athletic thing to do. It's really the last choice of parents. Jared, why do you think there's so few African African American pitchers in Major League Baseball right this, now? This is a great question. Uh, it took me a while really to think about it. First thing that comes to mind when it comes to the black community, it's not the cool thing. When it comes to you see Kobe in '62, you see Cam Newton in a, how he's portrayed. I, I would say this also: basketball now is a year-round sport. So AAU basketball is so big, it goes to the summer, so the, the conflict of interest when going in, you have a baseball game, basketball game, so that. Second thing that I would say when it comes to this is um, the financial game. When it comes to financially, obviously baseball in the long term makes a lot of money, but when you come a number one pick in basketball, 18, 19 years old, you get the, you get the, the guarantee money right away. You get the endorsement deals. Obviously football, they have their money when it comes slated from one to 30. Um, in baseball, you could be the number one pick and you still might not even make it to the major leagues. You gotta go to you know, single A, double A, triple A. And then the last thing I thought about was growing up, if playing, what, what did you play growing up? You buy a basketball, you can go to the gym and play. Football, you had your boys, you play four on four with an all-time quarterback. Mm -hmm. In baseball, you have a batting cage, you, you, you have to find a catcher, you, you can work on your pitching, but to really, the Sandlot days growing up, I mean, it, it, they're really so far and few. Well, for me, uh, in my era, um, I actually played baseball. I can remember trading the baseball cards. Mm -hmm. Now, a reason for that was, uh, and you mentioned it, um, Football wasn't year round. There was no pop Warner football when I grew up. So you just kind of, as, as the seasons change, you change as an athlete. Right. You know, you used to say football, okay. You went basketball, okay. And then it was baseball. And soccer was like, oh, that's like, what is that? You know, <laughs> I remember soccer coming in here. It was like, oh, don't play soccer. Okay, so that's it's kind of funny. And you go through generations of kids. But when you look at it now, I just think that when you look at football and basketball, it's really become TV. And, and, you know, if kids watch TV anymore, they don't watch TV, they watch their phones. You know, every yeah. kid got a phone. Yeah. I mean, you're going to watch highlights more of basketball or football. Mm -hmm. I mean, baseball is kind of like, you know, it's not, when you're a young kid anymore, you don't view baseball in our community as much uh, as you do basketball and football because that's all you ever see. That's all we talk about. I mean, all our shows, we talk about football all year round. Yeah. We really do. I mean, we, we talk about basketball. I mean, you know. NFL we, is king, and then I would say NBA is Yeah, and, and, and baseball is, is, is there. And I think baseball is exciting when it gets into the playoffs, into the World Series. And I think what happens with baseball, they play so many games that, you, you know, you don't, you don't have to keep up with it early. You can just kind of wait. Say, well, I'll wait for about, mm -hmm. you know, 60 games go by. And then, oh, then it gets interesting. But I just think it's just one of those deals where now kids grow up and they – it's a game that, obviously, it's, it's, it's not a fast-moving game by any stretch of the imagination. And we're in a world now, everything, everything's instant. You want yeah. information. You, you want to see it. You, you, want to, you want to see scoring. You know, and we're, we're in that kind of world. So I just think that's how the generations have changed, in my opinion. Fascinating question. I've thought a lot about this for many years because I grew up in the, the golden age of the black baseball player. Mm. Yeah. My favorite baseball player growing up was Bob Gibson. And if you've never heard of him, Google him, please. Mm. Yeah, Google him. Just it. Google right. him. Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson was a dominating black pitcher for my St. Louis Cardinals that were my favorite team growing mm. up. And there were lots of great black pitchers yes, in the was. era. Ferguson Jenkins and led to Dwight Gooden, obviously, and Vita Blue. We can go on and on yes. and on. But in those days, baseball was the national pastime. The NFL was just getting a foothold because college football was still a little bigger than the NFL was. It was just starting to come. And the NBA wasn't much at all. College right. basketball was much bigger than the NBA. So there was no dominating pro sport. In, like The NBA felt like a minor sport when I was a kid, a minor sport. Right. Mm. And now it's starting to rival the NFL in star power. And we, we tend to talk on this show NBA. We can do 365 days NBA on this show. Yes. And I'm happy with it. 
So to me, slowly but surely, it, it became clear to, to black kids, and I can't speak for them, but I've heard this, we've had, had this discussion dozens of times on the show, but to your cool point, it, it was much more fun to play basketball or football, just more fun. It's, it's, it's a faster game. It's, it's easier to play with your friends because you don't need a lot of equipment. And baseball became apparent to most black kids is, is a hard road to stardom. It's a hard, long road. And if you get drafted number one overall in baseball as a high school kid, nobody's going to know who you are, really, except your hometown right. and your home area will right. know who you are. But you're not celebrated the way we're, we just celebrated Ezekiel Elliott. Right. We're not going to have you in to first take before your draft. We're not going to know who you are. Even if you go to college, we won't really know who you are. We might have seen you play in the College World Series, but we're not going to have you on first take. So then you're going to have to go to the minor leagues. And it might take you four, five, six years to get to stardom. Now, once you reach stardom, and may I throw this out? Oh, boy. Hmm. David Price from my school, Vanderbilt University. Now, he went to, to college for three years. Then he got drafted and had immediate impact with a franchise in Tampa that needed immediate impact. But he was able to pitch in relief right away in the World Series. He was 23 years yes. old by that point. He is making this year for the Boston Red Sox $30 million. That's beyond Kobe money. That's beyond any NBA money. That's way beyond any NFL money. $30 million. Yeah. He's the second highest paid baseball player this year in the MLB to Clayton Kershaw, who's $32 million. Another pitcher, white pitcher, but who cares? You know, my point is, if you can pitch, you can pitch. Oh, yeah. And they are going to want you to pitch. We just you read the quote from David Archer. It took him a while. He didn't make it till he was 24 years old. He, he had to go through seven years in the minor leagues. He is a stud and a star, and he's going to make a ton of money. We've seen CeCe Sabathia make a ton of money straight out of high school. He was in the big leagues at age 20. Is it rare? It, it's doable. And whether we, we've gone round and round, I want to just bring this up just so it, just for the record. We've had many of our debaters here who have suggested there is some racism operating in Major League Baseball against black players. I, I don't know. I just want to, to, to declare this, that right. it, it could be some underlying. We now have three teams in the big leagues this year with zero black players. Right. Was well, it because they don't want black players? I find that impossible. If they can play, obviously, I, I would think they would want them. Is it harder for the black baseball player to come up? Uh, fighting against uh, the Latin players who might be cheaper to, to sign early on, maybe. I, I, well, I don't know. Yeah, the Latin players, I mean, in, I, for, in a lot of senses, that's their way yeah. out. And they know it. And yep. they start when they're, I mean, they're playing baseball when they're eight years oh, old. Yeah. I mean, they, they love baseball. I mean, that's kind of their of sport. The yeah, it's right. a culture, so and, that's and okay. You, you don't you have football or basketball as your way out exactly right. of yeah. those, those that's exactly cultures. Right. That's exactly so right. to, to me, I don't know about that. I want to acknowledge it for the record. But, but I also want to say that I believe in the end that most black kids just the, baseball's boring. It is. I, I played it's it when slow. I was a kid. It's slow, man. It's tedious. Slow. It, it's, it, and it got slower and slower. They're trying to speed it up. Yeah. But there are times when I think baseball is just dying you, in you're popularity. Right. And, you know, the thing about baseball, now, if you're a pitcher, then you're in the game. But if you think about it, when young, when young kids, most young kids can't hit. So if it's a good pitcher on the mount, you play any other position right. but beside catcher, mm -hmm. you're never going to see the ball. They throw it around when you strike the guy out around the base. Oh, hum, hum, baby. Okay, but it's the pitcher. It's the pitcher and the catcher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so th th there lies the problem. You're standing out in the field for like three innings. You never get a ball. It's like, come on, I want some action. But that, that's why every kid growing up wanted to play shortstop or center field because yeah. sure. that was the action, action athleticism. Action. Yeah. And as a pitcher, I mean, you always hear about when people having surgeries, Tommy John. You always heard that you wanted to save your arm. So that's true. You, know, you, you, you never you wanted to stay away from that position. Okay, but. David Price is oh making boy. $30 million, mm. yep. and, and he, he only has to perform every fifth day. So he gets, he gets four days off. <laughs> How would you like that? You play one game, and you get to sit four, right? right. Play pitcher, one, sit four. Pitcher like in, in football okay. is, is the quarterback, right? You get a good guy on the hill, yep. 
You got a chance to win a lot of games. Okay, but but a lot of kids might look at a pitcher as kind of a boring position because yes. you don't get to play every right. day. Right. You know? So I, I I get it. it. It's not shocking to me, but the stats are shocking that we're down now down yeah. to one point eight percent. That's not very much. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again today, Jackie Robinson Day, sixty nine yeah, years Robinson. ago, he made his major league debut, breaking down the color barrier and transcending sports. So we honor and commemorate him today. Yes, we be, do. Everyone yes. will be wearing forty two, his <laughs> retired That's jersey, right. the baseball park. So it's really special. Up next, we switch gears. Since 1997, Skip and America's team has been the definition of mediocre. 152 what? and 152. What? How about that? That's rough. How about them Cowboys? Oh, struggle is real. Herm, what's happening next year? I We're going to get into this. Saudi Skip.